It was probably 25, 30 years ago when one day one of my research assistants at the law school came in and asked me a question about notary law and practice. And I didn't know the answer. Uh, he obviously didn't know the answer either. So the two of us together uh, over some time did some research and found there was very little uh, written at the time about uh, notary law, notary ethics, notary best practices. Um, so that led to the two of us um, both thinking at about the same time that uh, something should be done to correct this gap. Over the last 25 years, I would estimate, and I, I haven't kept a, a count of them, uh, but probably about 50 um, times I've been consulted um, in one form or another, either uh, uh, brief uh, encounters or uh, encounters of uh, years. One is a situation that happens uh, tragically often, and that is the situation where an imposter manages to get a notary to perform a notarization for the imposter. Uh, there, something's obviously gone wrong with the identification process. Um, uh, identification has either been uh, uh, lacking altogether and, and somehow a notary has allowed the imposter to sign and obtain a notarization. Uh, or perhaps a notary has um, uh, been faced with a, a forged identification document and has uh, been duped by the, uh, that document. Unfortunately, there are situations where notaries uh, don't inquire into identification as much as they should have. The second setting uh, that is even more prevalent in, in my experience in the cases with which I've dealt are those cases where document signers have been very elderly and or uh, quite ill, uh, and with some regularity, those signers have been both uh, elderly and very ill and often terminally ill. And sadly, there are many circumstances where uh, uh, people uh, try to take financial advantage of the elderly. What then happens is that after uh, a notarization is performed and uh, after uh, it's discovered by others, uh, perhaps the, the individual, the signer, has by then passed away, or at least their assets have been transferred as a result of the uh, notarization, then someone uh, on that, the signer's side of the, the matter, a, a surviving family member, a guardian, someone, uh, will find out about the notarization and challenge it. Rarely are notaries guilty of intentional wrongdoing. Uh, rarely are notaries dishonest. Usually what happens, uh, the, the great majority of these matters are cases where notaries uh, simply are unaware of proper procedure, um, a statute doesn't clearly cover a matter and the notary doesn't understand what the best practice would be for dealing with a notarization. And something goes wrong as a result of um, a, a mistake, an error, or omission uh, in, in that way. The, the next largest group of the cases would be the ones where notaries are, are gullible occasionally. They are not... Um, sufficiently diligent gatekeepers uh, protecting signers and protecting the, the public interest. Um, they will occasionally allow sympathetic uh, stories to convince them to take shortcuts. The best two things that notaries can do to keep out of uh, legal cases and disputes um, uh, are the two things that we always teach here at National Notary Association, education and journalizing. Uh, if notaries uh, learn the statutes, learn the regulations, and understand that the statutes and regulations are incomplete and that they need to follow best practices to fill those gaps, if they follow those best practices, they won't make mistakes, won't get into trouble. And the other thing to do is to document their diligence by keeping a notary journal. If a notary journalizes every single notarization and if there's a dispute, 
all of the notary's journal entries will go before a judge or jury. It won't be just the one journal entry for one notarization but their entire body of notarizations where they've uh, shown time after time how diligent and thorough they've been, those will go before uh, judges and juries to help protect notaries uh, from these uh, lawsuits. I'm trying to convey the message uh, that notarization is very important, it's not child's play, and it's becoming more and more uh, important and more complicated. Um, with the complex of issues we're now dealing with, uh, 20 years ago we weren't judging the mental awareness of document signers. Nowadays notaries need to do that, they need to assess uh, whether signers are um, acting willingly. In this day and age of document fraud and identity theft, we've got to be more and more cautious about identification of document signers. So with, uh, and documents are becoming more and more valuable. The transactions behind them uh, are not a few dollars uh, anymore. A lot of them are for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that could be involved. I'd like to emphasize to every notary regardless of what state or territory uh, they uh, reside in, uh, that their state uh, notary laws and regulations are incomplete. No state's statutes are complete, and in many cases they're quite incomplete. When the statute is incomplete, the regulations are uh, incomplete, those gaps need to be filled in somehow, and that's why I've called the book Notary Best Practices. This is a book about the best practices that should apply when there are gaps in the statute about how to go about performing our uh, functions as notaries. Mm -hmm.